Welcome to WTF Stories and Advice. I'm Caroline Cranshaw. I'm Daryl Gove. And we are two hypnotherapists that give advice and tell fucking crazy ass stories that you guys write to us. Because we feel like we know everything and we have advice for everyone. (laughs) We are professional (laughs) know-it-alls. So... Daryl's reading the letter today. He's taking over the the mailbox at the moment, and I've just been way too busy. So you have a letter for us today, Daryl. Yes, I do. It's not a long one, but it's one that I think this lady needs some help with. So Mm. yeah, I can dive right in. Okay. Dear Caroline and Daryl, I hope this email finds you well and thriving. I like that word, thriving. Mm. As I sit down to write to you, I can't help but feel excited that you might read my letter and respond. I won't lie, I feel like I'm a little bit nervous too. Caroline, I find your voice radiates warmth and wisdom, and I find myself eagerly awaiting each new episode. Can I say, Caroline, it sounds like she's got a bit of a wedding for you. (laughs) Well, thank you. That's so very nice of you. That's really nice. I appreciate it. And Daryl's voice sounds like shit. No, she says, and I like that you're spending more time with Daryl on the show. He has interesting insights. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Victoria. My friends call me Vicky. At school, I was known as the Big V. I'll let you guess why. Uh, well, I don't, how do you? Overweight? There's a few. Big V, but then I'm like, does she have a big vagina? Does she have? It's very personal, Caroline. I know. Well, Big V, I don't, fuck, okay, I don't know. All right, get, go ahead, sorry. So, sorry, you were saying about big vaginas. Uh, I got distracted by my partner being in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Not thinking about vaginas. Well, Big V, I don't know. She said, I bet you can guess why, but I just, <laughs> anyways, I digress. Go on. <laughs> Maybe she knows where our minds will go. If Maybe she's just quite tall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a 55-year-old single woman whose children have recently left home. With my kids embarking on their own adventures, I find myself embracing this newfound freedom and rediscovering who I am. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Well, absolutely. (laughs) It's both bittersweet and exciting to have an empty nest after years of laughter and chaos. During the day, I work as a curator at a charming vintage boutique. What's a curator? I work as a curator. I like it. It's like a museum. That's what I think. But a boutique, maybe like she looks after the stuff or I have no idea. Like I always think of a, a curator as a museum. I spend my time carefully curating collections that tell stories of the past, breathing new life into each unique piece. It's a job that brings me joy and allows me to connect with the beauty of bygone eras. Mm, very cool. So I wonder if it's vintage. Well, it's, it's a vintage boutique. So I wonder if it's like she has to like collect the vintage clothing or something. And I went to a, a vintage boutique in, well, it wasn't a boutique, a vintage shop in Melbourne. And it was huge. And it had collections. Like it had the best clothes and the best service in the whole world. By the way, if you want the best service when you're shopping and have like two people dressing you and choosing clothes, then go to the vintage shop on Chapel Street. So maybe it's like that. Maybe she has to like get the collections together. But however, it brings her joy. And now that I've got a little bit more time to myself, I've embarked on my own journey of self-discovery. I've rekindled my passion for painting, capturing the essence of the world around me on canvas. I've also joined a book club, indulging in the pleasure of losing myself in the pages of captivating stories. Okay, to be honest, I don't really read the books. I'm just there for the wine. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that sounded a bit over the top. (laughs) Get on you. I like that better. (laughs) Though I love to read. (laughs) But that's what you say when you're going on a date, like assuming that you, you are dating. It's like, oh, yeah, and I go to the book club and I'm so cultured. And they're like, no, I just drink the wine. (laughs) I think she'd probably get more response. I used to belong to several book clubs and I'd literally be the only one that read the book almost always. <laughs> and I'd just be oh. like, Jesus Christ, people, why are we even doing this? <laughs> but yeah, but it was more about the wine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sam. I'm trying to make my life sound as glamorous as possible, but really, I'm just a bored, frumpy housewife left at home to dry up. Hmm. Hmm. What's worse, I have an embarrassing secret, which I'll come to. I separated from the father of the children almost 15 years ago. He was an alcoholic and not good for me or the kids. Since then, I haven't really dated, though I did have an affair with my boss when I worked for a big fashion label. We used to stay late to do inventory or to close up, then we'd have a quickie in his office before he went home to his, inverted commas, uncaring wife. It's not my proudest moment, but over the years I find myself getting my itch relieved in ways such as this, usually short, casual affairs. Meeting a guy at the bar and taking him home or going to his, has happened from time to time. I tried the apps, but they don't really work for me. I don't think I'm too old to have another chance at love, but I really don't know where to start. I guess I'm writing to you because I've been making really bad decisions and I want you to stop me. Well, that is too late, but anyway, please help. (laughs) So it started in the summer. I live in a picturesque suburban area. Think Desperate Housewives meets Germany. If you stand in my bedroom window, you can see the street and a bus stop on the other side. I never thought anything about it except for it was convenient. I don't like driving. <laughs> what's funny? Sorry. <laughs> My mind's just racing ahead to the what's happening. <laughs> so bus stop. I'm just thinking, is she flashing them through the window? She pick it? Yeah, sorry. I'm just, yeah. Anyway, go on. You have such a dirty mind entire line. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think that's why she's writing. <laughs> I don't like driving, except to the grocery store. I've hated cars ever since my driving instructor touched me up when I was 19. Mm. One day, I was getting out of the shower and drying myself off. I went over to the window to shut the curtain, which I usually do before (laughs) my shower. I knew it. (laughs) (laughs) You are so psychic. Unless you've read this as well. (laughs) Uh, No, I haven't. But well, this is obvious, right? (laughs) Yeah. I never really saw the point of the bus stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, why else would you say that? Leading. Although, yeah, yep. when I first read it, I didn't catch on to that at all. <laughs> all right, go on. So, so I was getting out of my shower and drying myself off, and I went over to the window to shut the curtain, which I usually do before I have a shower. There, sat on the bus stop, was a group of guys. I recognized one of them as a friend of my son's, so guessing they would have been in that 25 year old age range. I saw one of the boys looking up at me and went to wave, and I don't know what came over me, but instead I just dropped the towel. (laughs) I then picked it up and just stood there in the window, drying my hair with it in the nude. (gasps) Then I started putting on my body lotion right there in the window. I pretended I didn't notice the guy staring and went about it till the bus came. Afterwards, I felt a flush of excitement, got my vibrator out, and had the most intense orgasm ever. Public... (laughs) You guys can't see the look on Caroline's face there, but... But it's funny. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about her son. <laughs> like, the, if, if that were to get around, that would be my only concern, really. It's like everyone's coming to the bus stop to have a show. <laughs> Your friend's mom. Well, she did say she'd been making bad choices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she must what? She probably has a good figure. <laughs> she's doing that. <laughs> I mean, she says she's from people. Um, you know, people tend to downplay themselves. Maybe she has frumpy clothes, but looks great in the nude. Yeah. Public nudity is not illegal where I am, but it does feel immoral. I grew up in a religious household and my parents would die another death if they knew what I was doing. I promised myself never to do it again. Very soon afterwards, I found that I was checking the window every day, waiting for some of those boys to come back. I have to admit, it became a bit of an obsession. I found myself pausing the TV and going up to check if the guys were there or rushing home from work to look out the window at the bus stop in the hope of seeing them. And yes, I did see them often. And each time I did, I would get so horny afterwards and have great orgasms. But each time she did what? (laughs) Did she? She doesn't say. 
each time <laughs> I did, I got so horny, <laughs> but like from what? Just seeing them or was she flashing some titty? Uh, I think the next um, paragraph gives it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the gang started to go and hang out at the bus stop. As I would I see bet them. They did. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Uh-huh. <laughs> As I would see them more and more. They started drinking there on weekends or smoking joints at night. Each time I saw them, I would do the same thing. They watched me innocently undressing and putting on my body lotion. I made sure my hands were paying attention to my breasts and bending over to give them an eyeful. For context, it's a bay window. You know where the bay windows are? Yeah. Those, I'm from yeah, the yeah, yeah. bay area. <laughs> uh, the bay area. <laughs> and we have lots of bay windows in California. Yeah, go on. Anyway. I don't think we get them in New Zealand like almost at all. I think they exist in the old villas, but... They definitely do in villas. Every now and then, someone else would be there, an old lady or a family, and I would quickly move away. Though I find the prospect of getting caught also thrilling. So one evening, I'm at the window doing my usual thing, and one of the boys leaves the bus stop, walks towards my house, and knocks at the door. Yeah, I, I freak the fuck out. Yeah. I closed all the windows and I hid. I feel so stupid. He knocked again. He must have waited for a good five minutes. Now the boys keep turning up at the bus stop, and there are even more of them. They keep looking and pointing at the window, even though I don't show up anymore. Every now and then, one of them comes and knocks on the door. I think there are about 10 regulars. My elderly neighbour even complained to me the other day about the gangs hanging out at the bus stop and how they don't feel safe. I feel so guilty. I don't know what to do. I enjoyed the excitement, but I don't actually want to have sex with them. I'm now terrified that they will see me going to or from my house. What if my son's friend recognises me and tells them what I did? Tells my son, what if the neighbors or other people saw me? I feel so stupid, but I also feel so lost. It's lonely at home alone. Please help. What should I do? Indulge mine in their fantasies? Move to another city? I'm open to ideas. Yours, Vicky. All right, Big V. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's what the... The guys call you too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, voyeurism and exposing yourself is probably the most common fetish there is. It absolutely is. Um, and people go, oh, voyeurism? Really? And it's like, yeah, porn. What do you think porn is? Porn is voyeurism. Mm. And some people like to put on shows and some people like to watch those shows. And so it is... It's like if you're going to have a fetish, it is the most common one. As a woman living on her own, I think you are getting into dangerous territory because a little bit of fun, giving a thrill, but that it just depends on who sees that. And they might feel like you're offering a lot more. And even if you say no, they might decide to take it because of this kind of open behavior. <laughs> My advice is start going to some nude beaches. Where you can do it. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice. I mean, she's in Germany by the sounds of it. There's not that many beaches in Germany. No, but they're definitely into nudity. Like they are fine with nudity. And they tend to be very open sexually, I find. Almost too. <laughs> I think I was watching this comedian, this German comedian, and he was talking about how Germans have this massive guilt over World War II and what happened. And so to deflect from that, they've gone really extreme with porn. So they do like scat porn and playing with poop and all this uh, stuff. So you forget what they did in World War II. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice theory, but I think that the extreme sexual behavior started long before World War II. They That's were famous for their sex clubs, like the, the gay clubs, the sex clubs, leather clubs, like well before World War II. But yes, why not just deflect from the, the kind of rocky history? I think, yeah. Oh, you know, no, just about the nude beach. When you said that, I was like, genius. Like, 
But then I'm thinking probably that's not a possibility. I mean, don't know where she is, but unless she's in the north and then you're on the Baltic coast, which is cold, there's no nudist beaches there. So she's going to have to go. What nudist lakes? I know Must they have be. them here. We're naturalists, right? But I think for her, it's not so much about being nude. It's about getting a thrill, right? And mm. I think number one, you've got to forgive yourself for what you've done because every single one of us just about has stuff in our closet that we're ashamed of. That and, and it's We all make mistakes. <laughs> we all do things. <laughs> like if your whole life was filmed, most people, 99% of people would have stuff they would be deeply ashamed of and wouldn't want other people to see. So it is normal to have something like that. And I find a lot of times if you got married and had kids and you haven't had an outlet for that or you didn't really express yourself that way as a teenager, then it'll happen after the kids leave home and you have an mm. opportunity. Like I know a lot of women around the same age that are like suddenly going to sex clubs and doing more thrilling, exciting things. But I think it's also finding other ways to get excitement in your life and possibly sexual excitement. Just be glad that you're kind of fluff, if that's what we call it. It's not online where it's forever like this, unless they took photos, which you... <laughs> oh, oh God, I didn't even think of that. Oh, shit. Of course they did. Who wouldn't? Oh, don't... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Sorry, Vicky. But if you've ever listened to us before, which it sounds like you have, you know we fucking laugh through these things. Oh, no, sorry. But just just Google image search your naked body from time to time just to make sure it's not there so you can take it down. Look, nobody... <laughs> <laughs> Are you breaking any rules by being in your own house? It is a real gray area. But I think you need to find a partner who can... Because there'll be a lot of men who'd be into that. Like, I had a client recently <laughs> who happily married man with kids and he goes for a walk every day at lunch and there is a, a nude beach near where he lives and he is getting an eyeful and he's not doing anything he's not cheating on his wife he's just getting a thrill and I was quite shocked at like, the stories he had of Group sex, orgies, all kinds of stuff going on. I was <laughs> <laughs> telling this at a dinner party. I hope say it's completely confidential. I don't say who it is. I, I don't think the, the nude beach is confidential because everyone knows about them, right? Exactly. And all the guys at the dinner were like, uh, where is that exactly? And uh, what time <laughs> does he go? <laughs> and like, they were all very interested to start walking <laughs> from Fox. So I think the thing is, it sounds like you need some more excitement in your life and that's okay. And, but it's finding a way that you can find safe ways of doing that. I wouldn't recommend doing that from home because I really feel like you're putting yourself at risk of someone breaking in and, or taking things as an invitation. Be, be clear about this as well. It's like, the, well, she wore a short skirt, so that was an invitation. We're not saying that anything you're doing is makes that okay but crazy yeah. people look for ways to justify their crazy behavior exactly. and so I, I, it has to be risky doing it from your own home better to go and stay at a friend's house and do it there <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> for your parents do it for your parents but no no i mean i would if you really wanted to do it like wear a wig <laughs> dye your bush a different color <laughs> or don't have one but it must be scary knowing that she has been seen by people who might know her. Well, they do know her, right? Well, at least, well, at least the this we know that the son's friend. Where I'm assuming her son hasn't said anything because hopefully, I mean, I assume she would have mentioned that. But I say move to the UK. I think <laughs> go to England. They're big into their voyeurism there, but they do it in what's called laybys. Do you have laybys in the USA? No, what's that? So you're on like a, a dual carriageway, which is like a motorway. It's got two lanes and it goes fast. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest stops. And there's like, yeah, a rest stop. Yeah. 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 They do that. So, in a, they do that everywhere. <laughs> do that everywhere. Oh, they're... Yeah, they do it here too. <laughs> Clients telling me. Yeah. Public <laughs> toilets. But this is more gay men cruising normally. No, no. So this is different. This is not cruising. 
that I'm talking about. It's called dogging. I think we mentioned it once before. Yeah. So you pull into the rest stop in your car and it's usually straight couples and they stay in the car and other couples come and watch them humping. Yeah. They call it dogging because men go, oh, I'm going to go walk the dog. And then they walk <gasps> to where people do it. Is it? Yeah. That's why they call it dogging. Oh, I didn't know. I now I know. I just assumed it was the way they were humping. Oh. <laughs> no, I did a radio show on fetishes. So <laughs> I have a whole list. Everyone's got their kink. I think for you, it's don't beat yourself up. I just I don't want you to get into a situation where someone takes it as, like I said, an invitation for something more. But I think it's just very clearly showing you that you need some excitement. And you're still obviously very sexual and that needs to have an outlet. And that's okay. And make a list of your perfect man. Like find or woman or whatever you want. Make a list and really put it out there. I'm such an advocate of making a list and manifesting exactly what you want. And be very, very specific. Good in bed. Doesn't have premature ejaculation issues. If you have that issue, hey, come talk to me. I can help you. No, no, don't come talk to me. Make an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Make a list, but also decide which of those are really important. Because I find a lot of mature women, what they do is they've been used to being on their own. And it's, I think we've talked about this before. I'm perfect as I am. And I deserve perfection. And they look for someone, but instead of thinking the guy's perfect as they are, they look for someone that meets all these criteria. And sometimes it's like, you're being too picky, love. It's okay to be picky about the things that are really that are important to you. Exactly. And then you've got the things that are negotiable. Like, it would be good if X, Y, Z. I would like that. So that you get a clear picture. It's just more of guidelines and to, to manifest. Oh, I was yeah. very picky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but everyone's going to have something, right? It's just finding people who have the something that you can deal with, that you can handle. Because there are no perfect people. There's just people whose imperfections you can deal with. So I think you just need some excitement. Don't be ashamed. Lots of people do it. Again, I think there would be lots of people who would love to watch you in your show. Hey, you know what she could do? She could become like a webcam girl. Oh, for the Tate brothers. No, not for the Tate brothers. Fuck them. For herself. Thank you very much. No one needs a pimp. I'm not a fan of Tate. No. I think he, I, there are some things I agree with him on. Nothing really about women in any way, shape, or form. Anyways, I'm sure maybe she could get some like long distance relationship with somebody that they can do all kinds of, you know, put on little shows for each other <laughs> on through the video with her curtains closed. Yeah, and a, a lot of relationships that start digitally that want to move to the next level might do things like that before they meet or before they are long distance relationships. It'd be common for people to have phone sex or video sex. But I, I think that it's like there's a combination that you've identified there, Caroline. There's the fact that maybe she wants some fun and excitement in her life. Mm. Then there's the maybe she wants company. And then maybe there's the thrill factor. So naked parachuting. That's right. Naked tandem parachuting. That's my advice. You get <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> oh, I don't <laughs> Keep your legs closed, though, while you do it. Because um... <laughs> <laughs> you'll whistle on the way down. Oh, well, you can actually, like, seriously hurt a woman or kill a woman. I've heard. I don't know if this is actually true, but I've heard this. If you blow into the vagina... Because apparently air can go like go up into the uterus and go up into an artery. And it's like putting in like air into an, an IV. I will never kill a woman that way. No, <laughs> we don't have to worry about you ever putting your <laughs> mouth anywhere near a vagina. So we're good on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I had a friend that she did go parachuting with this guy. I think she was in Taupo. She was visiting from Scotland. I'd met her in France on holiday and she was like, I'm coming to New Zealand. And she must have been 20 or 19 at the time. And she says she got to the bottom with the tandem instructor and immediately slept with him. And I think this was (laughs) quite common. 
the excitement and the adrenaline, people apparently confuse it with love. Mm. So they they did a study where they got people to do a, a task with an instructor and they would either have them like go across like a rickety bridge between two cliffs or they would do something else and then they would ask them about their feelings towards the instructor and the people that did the scary stuff would feel like really attracted to them maybe fancy them and the people that didn't do the scary stuff wouldn't and I remember reading this about I don't know when I was like 20 or something like that and and hearing the story of my friend who slept with the parachute instructor with the piercing in his penis because she went into a lot of detail (laughs) and so I remember thinking right first dates make them thrilling (laughs) it's so true I remember reading about that study as well and I remember I was going on a date with this guy and I was meeting him somewhere like right by my house like this little bar and I was driving there and I saw these two boys beating up this other boy and I was right around from the corner so I like pull up to this bar and leave my car just right in front, run in. I'm like, come with me. And I fucking drag him and we just drive right back. And they were still beating this kid up. And this guy was like six foot five or six and gets out of the car and was like, I like chases these kids off. And we like check on the kid and he's like, holy shit. And then we go and have the date. And we really, I, I think he was much younger than me. He wanted children. I didn't, but there was just, it was no way it was going to happen. And so at the end, I was like, it was lovely to meet you. But, and he's like, oh no, I have really intense feelings for you though. Like, honestly, I think we can just make it work. And and I'm like, no, honey, that's just a psychological effect because I took (laughs) you to this fight and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, do you just fuck with men's heads for a living? I'm like, yes, I do. (laughs) (laughs) Quite literally. Um, but he was just like so convinced that we are meant to be together. And I was just like, oh, no, that's just the adrenaline telling you, you think we have this amazing connection, but we really didn't. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was funny. But I find that something crazy happens. People, it's much more heightened. Like that movie Speed. You remember Speed with the bus and oh. Ken Reeves? And <laughs> don't, can we just take a moment? I don't think we do this enough in life. Can we all just take a moment? All the listeners. 30 seconds just to appreciate Keanu Reeves. Oh, he is so amazing, isn't he? He is literally just, like a walking saint. Yeah. This best. He's got the heart. He's got the motivation, the soul, the looks, the just talent. He's yeah. amazing. So, and Sandra Bollocks too. I love her. I think she's brilliant. Yeah. She's really good too. That combination of those two. Yeah. He was so good in. I was just thinking like a totally unheard of role for him, but it was like, always be my maybe with Ali Wong. Have you seen Hmm. that? No, but I want to because I love Ali Wong. It's on Netflix and basically, yeah, she's got like this childhood kind of boyfriend or best friend. And I think they like had some pact that they would get together or that they're older and single and then they do come across each other and she's like uber successful and he's like helping his father with like his electrician thing but Keanu Reeves comes in as like a a love interest but playing completely himself and it's so so good he is so good at it. okay good good okay that's my movie for tonight thank you very much please thank you yeah it is good in speed they fall in love at the end of this really intense adrenaline fueled movie and they say to each other you know I've heard that falling in love under these circumstances it never works out and of course it doesn't because in Speed 2, where's Keanu? Well, he's not there. That's because the Speed <laughs> 2 script was shit. And he was like, no fucking way. And even Sandra Bollocks was like, oh, I'm so sorry I did that movie. Like, I, But however. I think it's Sandra Bullock rather than Bollocks. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Balls. <laughs> Bullock, yeah. You love to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't like it if she had bollocks, but um, you know Arnold Schwarzenegger. You'd you would like her more. <laughs> I would like, oh, nah, nah. I, I think she's like, she's good as a woman. Aaron, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in this film Kindergarten Cop. Did you ever watch it? Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. And Grandad recorded it for us on, you know, VHS when we were little. I remember like he gave dad the tape and it was like Ernest Schwartz film. Ernest Schwartz. <laughs> Oh, it's like, no. 
<laughs> than Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's just stupid, but came into my mind. Just the scene in that where the little boy pops up and goes, boys have penises and girls have vaginas, <laughs> right? Which you can't say these days. Now you have to say no. a bonus hole. A bonus hole. <laughs> no, I have not heard that. Um, uh, why a bonus hole? Uh, <laughs> okay. So they have the normal one and one's a, one's a bonus. You get once every five years if you're good. I. <laughs> so the Cervical Cancer Trust, in partnership mm-hmm. with an LGBT foundation, charitable foundation, began suggesting the term bonus hole be used as a way to support trans men and non-binary people. <gasps> What? So it's an, yep, it's according to their glossary. It's a bonus hole is an alternative word for the vagina. And you, they recommend you should check and see which term someone would prefer to use. Or you also could call it a front hole. What? Yeah. I mean, I, I have to say, I think a front bum is a hilarious name for it, but it's not respectful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Yeah. My family are banned from listening. Oh, no, you shouldn't ban your family. So, yeah, Vicky, I don't know if you've got a sibling that you can go and stay at their house and hide, but I don't think you need to move. If you stop it, they'll get bored and they'll they'll not come back. It'll be done. Give it a few weeks. Get a security camera anyway, because you're a single woman. I, I have one anyway, yeah. and I'm not single. It's just a good thing to have. Absolutely. Have a good lock on your door anyway. Just have that. But, but it doesn't sound like they have any sinister intentions. They were there for a pair of... If you're not going to do it anymore then it, they'll just go away. They won't get that dopamine response, that excitement. They'll come. There's no reward. But if you do it from time to time, they'll get a bigger reward. Yeah, exactly. Because you've deprived them and then given it. So either never do it again. Don't do it again. Don't. If you want a, my opinion, don't fucking do it again. Because people take photos or videos that could come back and bite you in a big way. Yeah. So never do it again because you also don't know who's going to see that or what they'll do with that information. And if nothing happens in the next week or two, like they'll stop coming, then nothing's going to happen. You're fine. And then after that, do go and get your thrill somewhere. Like, Why don't you just start doing some Google searches, voyeurs, voyeur clubs, nude beaches, book yourself a holiday to Spain. You know, it's plenty, plenty nude beaches there. And I know that since you're German, I assume that you're German living in Germany. What you'll want to do is get there four months early and put your towel on the sun lounger. So that everyone knows for the next month that nobody else can use it till you get there. <laughs> that is so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Germans are so rude with the sun liners. Yeah. Yeah. Is it true? Well, I think people from all cultures try to do that bullshit. I'm sorry, I'm going to offend a whole country again, but everyone knows it's Germans. They, if you, In France on holiday, the Germans would get up before everyone else in the campsite. They would go to the pool, huge pool with water slides, and they would put all their towels on on the sun loungers in the front row by the pool, and then they would go away and eat their breakfast. I'd just throw so, it off and sit down. What? Are they? Well, the rest of the people were either British or yeah, they're too polite. I've had people. I've done that actually. I think in Mexico or maybe the Bahamas, and someone came up and was like, "My towel's not here," and so I got and I like looked all over the chair, and I was like, "No, I don't see it." And they were like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I don't see your name written on this chair. It's not yours. Go away. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't that aggressive. Oh, will and- you? <laughs> I'm a bitch. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah. But at the at the pool, to put your towel there and then not just go away for one minute, but to go away and have breakfast and expect it to be there. And of course, the British people there, we're all polite, right? And we queue and we're orderly. And so... We don't take those. We nobody ever took the towels off. They just left them, and then the Germans would come back, and they would get a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a stare. But that would be about it. Like, oh no, not a word would be said. Not a disapproving British stare. (laughs) Yes, a disapproving (laughs) British stare, and they didn't care. And then they just go and swim. Yeah, Yeah. So that is that is rude, and you shouldn't be able to do it. But so, but. If you're going to go to Spain and go to the nudist beaches, then do make sure you have a towel because, you know, you don't want naked body all over a shared sun lounger. You do want your towel underneath you. That is a very good point. I remember (laughs) when I would have been 19, and I know I've told this story on the podcast before, so I'm not going to go into the whole story. But yeah, like I was desperate for a job. I was living in San Diego, answered this ad, my girlfriend and I who are living together. Um, 
answered this ad to be a waitress at a strip club, but we didn't think we had to be, it didn't say topless or anything, right? So we were like, we could do that and just like serve drinks. So we go along and they decided, no, you're going to strip and lock us in this room. And it, for some amateur night and we like freaked out, but their whole thing was like, okay, so first song, uh, strip down to your panties. Second song, panties off. Just don't rub uh. your vagina up and down the pole because you can get an STD that way. And I was just like, oh my God. And then we were like, we're not doing this. And there was women spinning around the pole who were obviously not amateurs. And then the rest were like crack addicts. It was so bad. And then we were like, we're not doing it, but we're the only kind of young ones there. And so they locked the door and leave. And so we just stood by the door and I waited till they came back and we busted through and ran out. So you never had the opportunity to get your girls out in public then? Well, not, not at a strip club. Not there. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, but I was just horrified at the thought of getting an STD from a stripper pole. I was like, now they do it as fitness. Like I know lots of people who go to strip pole fitness classes and stuff or pole fitness, maybe not strip pole. And it's quite good exercise. It is. Just make sure if you have one at home that it's really well secured into your ceiling. Otherwise, you could have an accident, which I've heard of from time to time. I mean, we all do <laughs> stupid things. I remember when I was... 11 and my mother was having a party and she gave me some disposable cameras to take photos and I went and took a picture of everybody's crotch at the party. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? I had a friend with me so we'd hold it up and then we go Krr. they must have known what we were doing. I can barely remember it. All I can remember is we even took photos up women's skirts and shit. Like it was bad. <laughs> you know when I, yeah, yeah, yeah. go film uh, done, and I just hear, remember hearing this screaming <laughs> coming from my mother. She went in to get it, and I think I was sitting in the car, and I was like, "Oh fuck, I think I'm gonna be in trouble." And she's like screaming as she comes into the car, and she's just was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you, you fucking weirdo?" <laughs> I was like. <laughs> It's funny. She's like, this is not funny. You need to go to a therapist. You are mentally disturbed. <laughs> not to to People, of course, they knew what you were doing. <laughs> of course oh, they knew. It's so bad. I, she gave me these disposable cameras to take pictures of her nice party. And I just literally just took a photo of everyone's garage. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't like on digital where you can take photos and just delete them. It's so expensive. No. To buy those cameras in the olden days, <laughs> to take the photos, and then to develop <laughs> them. I think I did have to go to some therapy thing now that I think about it. <laughs> anyway, And you took up skirts. I'm pretty sure I did. Like, that's how bad. I mean, what the fuck? When I was at working at the bank, I used to wear a kilt often. And oh, one day, no. they assistant manager was, was an older woman she I saw her kind of scooting over to me with her like one foot was out front she had a mirror oh. taped to her toe <gasps> a mirror and did <laughs> not she joking. see up your, and were you not wearing undies under it oh I'm Scottish so <laughs> <laughs> but what if there's like a big breeze or you walk over like a vent and everyone it was sees a good, your no kilts are really heavy like if you get a real kilt, like often people in inverted commas wear kilts. They're not kilts. They're tartan skirts with pleats. A, a yeah. real kilt has so much weight of wool in it. It's very, very heavy. They don't blow up. Like it's just it's never going to happen. And then that's what the sporin's for. So what, one of the functions of the sporin, the little pocket on the front, is that yeah. it it hangs down. So if there, a wind blows it up, the sporin will actually keep it from blowing up past your penis. And your ah. ball sacks, so nobody oh, can ever see. That's why you have the purse. <laughs> well, it's it's one of the functions. And then, yeah, I mean, there's other occasions, like if you're dancing and stuff, but you just learn. Like, women, I suppose, you know how to, like, not flash people your fanny when you're wearing a skirt, right? Uh, I do. But, like, <laughs> I, had, I had a friend on this podcast who she flashed her vagina at her wedding. 
to the cast. <laughs> <laughs> I am not kidding. And then her husband was wearing a kilt because I won't say where he's from, but <laughs> he was wearing a kilt and she flashed his penis at everybody too. Yeah. So Did I ever tell you what my <laughs> mom and dad did at my auntie's wedding? No. So we stopped off at her friend in Scotland's on the way and they picked up a dildo and we got told it was a willy warmer that you put it oh. in your willy if you get cold and it keeps it warm because we'd seen it and they didn't want us to know. I must have been about four, but I remember it. And so we got to this wedding in England and what they did is a kilt has layers. So mm. you can lift up kind of one flap and there's still the other flap underneath. And so they attached this dildo. It was a skin colored, a flesh colored one between the <laughs> flaps so that what my dad would do is he would lift up the first flap and flash the ladies the dildo and they would get a shock for a moment until they realized that it's not a it's real a penis. Yeah. It's just a dildo. And, and then eventually like somebody had had enough. So he put it in what he thought was mum's bag. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, she got home. It's like, where's the dildo? <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> she paid, put it in some old lady's bag. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine getting home from a wedding and finding a dildo in your purse? You'd be like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> what if her husband found it and she was married? Welcome to WTF TF Stories and Advice. This is Caroline and Daryl, <laughs> and we have been talking shite. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have embarrassing stories, you should write them to us <laughs> because <laughs> I think we feel so much shame over the things we did. And I think that sometimes those things are some of the best stories you have later on. <laughs> it gets to the point where at, at some point in your life, I, I think maybe this is why as we get older, we're more peaceful. Things happen, and instead of feeling really, really bad like we should, or maybe I should, I, when things like, maybe not quite like that, but when things happen, I think, this is going to make a great story. Like, that's my first thought sometimes. Like, yes, this is bad now, but <laughs> later on. That's, that's what I always say, and I say that to clients too. But it's such a good story. You are going to be able to dine out on this for years. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> you should come on my podcast and tell it. <laughs> They're like, you are fucking crazy. But I think if you can laugh at yourself and the tragedy of life, I think it's so much easier to get through. And I think that's how we all connect and relate is through sharing our stories. And I know for myself, I'll do that with clients a lot where they'll tell me some story and they're so ashamed. And I'm like, oh, honey, well, I blah, 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 blah. Like I went to a dinner party and got so drunk. I threw up all over the table of catered food. <laughs> so don't feel bad about your like, I'll tell stories of being embarrassed myself. And they're like, oh, thank God. And not that I try to make it about me, but I think rather than having a therapist who sits there and goes, interesting. And then makes a bunch of notes. <laughs> you go, oh, fuck, honey, I, I've done just as bad and it's okay and you're human and it's fucking hilarious and you're going to be able to tell that story and crack people up. But you know, one that's of my, kind of, my yeah. favorite expressions is to say to my clients, I'm glad you did that because now <laughs> you know. <laughs> now you know. And maybe don't yeah. do it again, but like at least you allowed that part to express itself. Let's find a new way to deal with it. But we will continue to share embarrassing stories. So any recommendations? Well, I'm sorry you're going through that, Vicky. I know. I feel like I keep going, coming back and forth. Forgive yourself, Vicky. You are absolutely yeah. fine. You've just gotten a little bit of a thrill and that's okay. But it's just highlighting to you that you need more excitement. The, the way I think of it is if you don't meet your needs, your brain will make you. And so listen to it. It's parts, right? So there's a part of your brain that needs excitement, yes. a part of your mind, and it's going to take charge. If you don't actually let it out to play, it's going to take charge. So you have to find that excitement. You have to find that connection, whatever the underlying needs are that you need met, the thrill or the company, do that. And otherwise you'll end up doing it in a way that's not safe and not healthy. So just, just maybe listen to that. And I don't even think there's anything to forgive. I mean, look, nobody died, nobody got hurt. It's you're in your own home. It's more a case of don't feel guilty. Just be more discerning in the future about your window behavior. 
And that's such a good point, though, Daryl, of the parts. I can't even believe I missed that. <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> there is a part of you that is driving you to do this because there's also another part that's like, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing this. But a good thing, if you are compelled to do something that you're conflicted about, good thing is just close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. You can imagine you're on like a beautiful beach or forest path and someone is going to walk up to you. And this someone is the part of you that's driving that behavior. And they could look just like you. They could look like a younger version of you. They could look like the best stripper in the world. I don't know. (laughs) And have a little chat with them and ask them what needs are they not fulfilling? What do they need? Like, how can you support them? And how can you get that same excitement, but in a way that's not as risky? Because most of us don't realize we have this team inside of us. And the more we can address that and heal those parts of ourselves, go to a hypnotherapist who can help you with this. You can even book online with Daryl and I, or find someone else who's really very well trained in parts, because that's exactly what I would do in clinic is do parts. I know a couple of German hypnotherapists as well, one that was trained in parts as well. So if you want someone that speaks German as a first language, get in touch. Otherwise, yeah, me or Caroline would be happy to help you. So if you want external help, let us know. Otherwise, you got this. Do that technique Caroline suggested. Just speak to that part of you. Find something else and let us know how you get on. Okay. And if you do start a webcam business and you want us to promote it to make money, send us it and we'll we'll promo you on the show. (laughs) Sounds good. Cool. So do you have any recommendations, Daryl? Not quite, but I I just do want to say that you recommended Silo last time and I got all Mm -hmm. like wet for it because of um, Rebecca Ferguson, who I love. And you were right. I subscribed to Apple TV just to get that show. I um, told Juan that if I I would go lesbian for her and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't go with her as a gay man with her, but like if I was a girl, I would totally be into her. She's amazing. And the show is, it's really good if you like that sci-fi futuristic dystopian kind of theme. If you don't, it's not going to be for you, but the acting is full of a good cast, like you said. So that, that was a good one. Other than that, I'm not really watching anything else i'm reading the mind body prescription Mm -hmm. by dr john sarno which is about how emotions can cause physical pain and something that's what we do in our in our job a lot anyway but it's just for extra reading and it's very interesting insights if you're i think if you've really struggled to find out the causes of pain like if you're not getting a diagnosis from a chiropractor or a gp and you keep exploring and it's just another book that might give you some insights Other than that, no. What about you? Any recommendations? A recommendation I have for a book that can help if you have a part of you compelling you to do things you're ashamed of. I recommend this book for anybody. It really was life-changing for me. And I actually did a workshop with the author. The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford, which is, it's all about the shadow. We actually Mm -hmm. teach some of the stuff, (laughs) Daryl. I didn't, I didn't know it was from that book, though. Yeah, Debbie Ford. She passed away, unfortunately. And the other one that's good by her is The Secret of the Shadow. So we have these parts of ourselves that we suppress, that we push down, that we don't allow out because we're ashamed of them or society tells them they're not okay. So she likes sexuality with women or exploring your sexuality, which is becoming more and more mainstream now. Mm. But her stuff is really good accessing those parts of you and healing them and your sexuality and you know what else would be good for her is doing like a burlesque class yeah yeah burlesque is like drag for straight women yeah like some type of burlesque because you can be any age to do burlesque and it really is just about getting into your feminine energy a great book to really get into your feminine energy is a book by Regina Thomashauer and it's Mama Gina's School of Womanly Arts. Mm -hmm. And she is so good. I'm sure I've talked about that on the podcast as well, but I just love anything by Regina Thomashauer. She is out there, let me just say. (laughs) And when I think Mama Gina, I always think like a big black woman from like New Orleans, but she's like a skinny white woman from like Philadelphia. But 
It's all about getting into your sexuality, especially her earlier books too. Another show I've been watching that just recently that I quite like, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but is, I can't remember what her name is, but it's on Netflix and it's Survival of the Thickest. And it's Michelle Barton. She's Mm. a curvy, voluptuous woman of color. She's got like freckles. She's a stand-up comedian and she is hilarious. I love her stuff. But it's a comedy sitcom of a woman who finds her her relationship blows up and she goes on this adventure and it, it's quite good. I like it, but it's a bit of fluff. It's nothing like intellectual, but she's great. I really like the actress that's in it. So survival of the thickest. I think you need a bit of comedy in your life. I think it's so important to have a laugh and watch something that makes you chuckle. So yeah, that's a, Absolutely. That's a good, good recommendation. Thank you. Well, awesome. If you guys have any crazy stories you want to let us know or there's any advice that you would like anything you want us to cover then write to us at wtf stories and advice at gmail.com if you want to drink less alcohol check out wine down if you want to study with us then go to what's the the latest website it'll all be linked in the show notes but we have integrative hypnotherapy institute but look at the show notes in the link and you can find us for training You can have live trainings with us online where you will have fun and learn cool things. Otherwise, just give us five stars and leave a review so that other people can find us. And thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye. Bye.